Hi everybody, it's Mike, part-time reselling in the Pittsburgh area. I also collect casino items and estate sales are sometimes a good place to find some casino stuff. Not often, but usually if you find one casino item, there's others somewhere around. Recently, I bought seven casino ashtrays at one estate sale, so I thought I'd go through them, show you the ashtray, and a little bit of history on each of the casinos. The Sands Hotel and Casino opened in 1952, closed in 1996. It was the seventh resort on the Strip, and it was where the Venetian is now. A lot of top stars played there, like the Rat Pack and Jerry Lewis, and it was the first hotel that Howard Hughes bought. This is actually the second one of these I had. I couldn't resist, I just think it looks really cool. The Riviera was open from April 1955 to May of 2015, last owned by the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, which decided to tear it down to make room for the Las Vegas Global Business District. It was the ninth casino on the Strip and the first high-rise at a dizzying nine stories. A lot of movies were filmed there, at least parts of movies, including the original Ocean's Eleven, Casino, and Vegas Vacation. The Four Queens in downtown Las Vegas opened in 1966, named after the builder's four daughters, Hope, Faith, Benita, and Michelle. It's still open today, and it's where you'll find the restaurant Hugo Cellar, but you won't find these ashtrays there anymore. The Silver City Casino opened in 1973, closed in 1999. It was where the Peppermill Restaurant is now, across from Resort Squirrel, where the Walgreens is, the Silver City Plaza and all that. The owner of the Silver City, Major Riddle, bought the Thunderbird after it changed hand a couple of times, renamed it the Silver Bird to go along with the Silver City. In 1980, he passed away. His estate tried to auction off the casino, but nobody bought it, probably because the opening bid was $3.8 million for a resort that was worth about $2.5 million, and you'd have to shell out about $264,000 a year. Uh, right now, it's the site of a Fountain Blue Las Vegas, the construction site that Casino was supposed to open in 2008. They're a little bit behind schedule. Now they're hoping for 2023. Mr. Riddle also opened the Silver Nugget in 1964, and it's still there. It's about three miles north of Fremont Street. By the way, he also wrote a book, The Weekend Gambler's Guide, published in 1963. You can still find copies of it online for between eight and twenty dollars. By the way, this is a this is a multiple uh, casino ashtray. The Holiday Queenland Corporation built the riverboat-themed Holiday Casino along with a Holiday Inn. The Holiday Inn opened in February of 72. The casino followed the next year. In 1982, the Holiday Inn was the largest in the world. In 1986, construction began on a three-story addition. During the groundbreaking, $380,000 worth of outdated Holiday Casino chips were poured into the foundation. In 1988, Holiday Casino was the first one to have computerized bingo. In 1991, the Promise Company ended its lease agreement with the Holiday Inn, renamed the Holiday Casino to Harris, which it still is today. In 1978, Knob Hill Casino opened up between a Denny's and a Travel Lodge on the Strip. It was known for its low limit gambling, like 25 cent craps, 10 cent roulette, and dollar blackjack. It closed in November of 1990 after its lease expired and opened 13 months later as the Casino Royale. Benny Binion bought El Dorado on Fremont Street in 1951 and renamed it Binion's Horseshoe. In 1953, Benny started serving a term for tax evasion and sold a majority interest in the Horseshoe to Joe W. Brown, a New Orleans oil man, to help pay for back taxes and legal fees. Although it was kind of known as a wink-wink deal, with Brown pretty much being a babysitter until Billion was released in 1957 and took back control of the casino. Brown was the first one to have the million dollar display at the Horseshoe. Now Benny, being a convicted felon, couldn't hold a casino license, but eventually the Binion family bought out Joe Brown and Benny became the director of public relations, although pretty much everybody knew he was really in control. 
So there you go, the recent ashtrays I bought with a little bit of history. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, please subscribe and all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you later. Bye!